July 15th marks the implementation day of the final phase of CRM2, uh, which is really an initiative that has been underway for a number of years to increase the transparency uh, for clients as they invest. Um, this final phase, what it's really, uh, it's doing a couple things. Uh, First, in enforcing disclosure of deferred sales charge fees, so actually quantifying when an advisor makes a commission when you uh, buy a new fund, what that commission really is and, and some of the parameters around that. And probably more uh, importantly for a lot of clients, it's, it's going to start to uh, require some reporting around their performance and their costs, their fees. And what I like about that uh, is that it's going to show it in a dollar format as well. So your uh, the client's going to really appreciate that a a two percent fee on a portfolio, um, say it's a million dollar portfolio. Well, that's twenty thousand dollars that goes. And I think that's going to create a bit of shock at first for clients who, who realize that and may have not quantified it before. And um, there are still some issues as I see it. Um, I think it's a really good step forward, as I've said, but I, uh, the issue around the compensation disclosure, uh, my, my problem with that has been that they only went part way. They, they have in, uh, required the reporting of the dealer compensation, not the entire cost to the client. And so they'll say that, but most clients won't understand what that means. They'll see this cost section and say, oh, okay, that's, that's the price I paid. But out of an MER, a typical management expense ratio of a fund, the dealer compensation is usually less than half percent of the true cost. So it would be a false assumption on, on the client's part to look at that cost figure and say, that's what they paid. In reality, they paid more than that. If a, if a fund has an MER of 2% a year, the dealer compensation is likely 1% a year. So that's what's gonna show up on the statement is the 1% and not the entire two.